Mastering a foreign language is much more than just getting the words right. You have to learn to use physical cues, like using your hands and shifting gazes and winking. Imagine if a computer could help you master those nuances and get you on your way to learning a foreign language. Here's how close you got. The ideal pronunciation is... Now, it's not going to upload everything to your brain matrix style, but it can go a long way. A collaboration of students and faculty at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute have created an immersive language laboratory that could change the way we teach language and do business. On this episode of Innovation Hall, we go inside this language lab and see how it works. Which word do you want to practice? Watson, number three. Well, the goal of learning a language is to be able to have natural conversations in real life, but you cannot really do that when you're at Chinese one or the lowest level of um, learning the language because you might just embarrass yourself as well. So uh, we built this environment where you could have this conversation, but with an AI who probably won't make fun of you. <laughs> but nobody's making fun of Rahul Devikar. He's one of the designers of this unique experience called the Mandarin Project. I work on the Mandarin project in terms of um, enabling the entire interaction um, and making sure that all of the separate technologies come together. The Mandarin project involves a 360-degree panoramic display. You walk into the room and multiple cameras lock onto you, picking up your every movement. A series of microphones picks up your speech and inflections. IBM's Watson recognizes what you say. And thus, you begin a conversation in Chinese with an artificial intelligence agent who can respond directly to what you're saying. You walk into the restaurant, you say hi, and the panda says, back, uh, says hi back to you, how many people are you? And you carry on that conversation until it asks you what drinks you want and what food you want. Um, but then we also include some educational aspect to it in terms of like uh, the panda asks you is the check correct and um, that's like you have to read those Chinese characters and make sure that oh this is indeed what I got. Um, or the panda will repeat what you order and say is this correct, is, it what, is this what you order and that's more like a listening skill. It's an intelligent classroom. It uses video game technology and artificial intelligence to help create a completely immersive experience, aka the ideal place to learn a new language, according to Mandarin project head Professor Hui Su. In a traditional classroom, you learn knowledge about the language. You learn, you learn grammars, vocabularies, and you know all kinds of knowledge about how to speak a language. But most of the time, when you you know, really talk with the language, you have a goal in your life. You want to finish something. You want to uh, accomplish a goal in a certain task. And that actually drives you to, you know, drive your brain to try to dig out all the language you learn to fulfill that task. Now, I don't know any Chinese. I can speak some Italiano, a little Francais, a little Espanol. So right now, I wouldn't get very far with that panda. But RPI yeah. senior Linnea Cagisti knows every word. So I work mostly with uh, creating and implementing the dialogues for this project. Ah, so you're like the writer, right? Yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I lived in China for a couple years, oh, and wow. so um, I'd say most of the, like, the street scene and the garden scene that we have, they are pretty similar, or the environments are like um, pretty like? similar to what you'd see, oh, yeah. and the interactions with the vendors, they're pretty pushy. Oh, you they like want to give you all the discounts like? and make you oh, buy yeah. all these things, oh, yeah. and that's definitely like what I've experienced there. Okay. We're trying to make the language as natural as possible, so we need to be able to handle cases where the student might not be able to say something fully in Chinese, or there'd be a lot of misunderstandings, and yeah, so just handling all these different cases that could arise, that's, yeah. <laughs> We're still working on that. A lot of moving pieces go into creating this experience, but underneath it all, there's some solid coding. That's where recent RPI graduate Andrea Wong comes in. I do a lot of the coding on the front end, so working with the UI and getting it to work, and then also interfacing with some of the back end services, such as the messages that are coming from. Watson uh, speech to text and text to speech, as well as working with the 
uh, gesture system that's set up for doing pointing and Tai Chi. For Rahul's part, he's focused on the overall user experience. So you really have to think about what, what the user wants to talk about and what's their level of language and how do people talk with AI in general. Um, because we talk with Alexa and Google Home as well. I think it is the next generation learning environment. It will change how people learn. Where do you see this project being implemented going forward? Like, you know, you've developed it to the point where, you know, you can put it out there in, in the wider world and community. I mean, do you see this going to schools? Do you see this going to, you know, government? Like, where, what kind of reach could this possibly have? Yeah, we imagine this kind of intelligent space not only help people with the learning activities from the classroom point of view, but also help people making decisions in all perspective. Good job. 朋友, 不用了. Thanks. See you soon. As with any new technology, there's still refinements to be made, so if we're learning a new language, we still have to hit the books. See you next time on Innovation Hall.